Well, hello, everybody. My name is Chris Greco. I'm with uh, Greco Technology, Greg Tech. Today, what we're going to be doing is uh, using the solver to uh, try to figure out different areas uh, of, let's say, a budget. So right there, you have type and amount. This is all contrived data. I had lodging, airfare, meals, training, admin, all those things that add up to a total of about seventeen thousand uh, dollars. Again, this is all contrived, just for the example. But you can use it with any type of budgeting you want. You can even use it with home budgeting, if you uh, really want to try it in those in those uh, confines. But this is what we're going to use with today, and this is what we're going to deal with today from the standpoint of uh, of budgeting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Solver. Now, if you do not have Solver, uh, there is a way of doing that, and we can go through that later on. And I've set up something here to be able to show you exactly how to use Solver. So what I did was I set it to um, B7 for the, the set objective, and that's going to be, that's going to be something that you're going to have to set there. So 17,000 is going to be the set objective. The value is going to be 15,000. Let's say your boss said, you've got to get, you've got to get down to $15,000 for your budget. And what I did was I also set a couple of constraints here. I set, um, I, I set the meals to 3,500, and I set the uh, training to 6,000, both of which, you know, were set, let's say, by your boss or by its current requirements for, the, let's say, an upcoming fiscal year. The way to add any constraints is just to hit the add, and then you can hit whatever constraints you like. Just understand a couple of things, and one main one is the fact that you see how this is less than or equal to, and the less than, or greater than or equal to, and those are first, the greater than or the less than. That's because if you tend to type in an equal sign, without anything else, it's going to, or even with something else, it's going to put in a um, a formula, because that's what the that's what Excel considers to be the formula. So once that all that once that's all done, then you can sit there and you can find out how you want to do this. Now you have the the default is GRG nonlinear, and that's what I would say to use because you have basically a nonlinear type approach here. You have uh, different amounts of different types. So it's definitely a nonlinear. A linear approach would be something like a linear equation uh, that would have to go with regression that would show a linear pattern. A linear pattern at that point in time would use something different. So once that's all done, and once you take a look at these different situations, and once you realize that you know this is this is something you can use rather than uh, let's say something that, I and if you want to use the other ones, simplex LP or uh, evolutionary, it, it comes up with an explanation right below it in text. You can take a look at it. And then once that is finished and you decide on the type of approach you want to do, then just hit solve. Once you hit solve, it'll come up and it'll tell you what the, it'll show you right there that you're going to have to reduce your lodging, airfare, and admin in order to make that 15,000 with meals at 3,500 and training at 6,000, which is what was set. My recommendation is to go always go to the radio button with restore original values because if you do that, then you can go back to your original values once it's done. Also, you can set a scenario, and in this case, I set it for test. And when you hit OK, it will it will go come up as being something you can use. And make sure that you hit that radio button, and the original values will come up again. So that's solver in a nutshell. And basically what happens is you can, you know, you can do a different type of thing with something like the what if scenarios. So if you, if you want to, you can go to scenario manager and there's your test scenario right there. You can actually run that test scenario anytime you want based on the solver that you had at the moment. Uh, or you can use a goal seek. Goal seek, uh, the one limitation is it only can use one area. So if you have a set and then you want to use a value then that's fine, but you're only going to change one thing. So in this case, let's say I want to change uh, a bunch of things, and I sit there and I, it says, nope, you can only change one thing. So that's, you know, you can't even get around it. You've got to change just one area. And if you do that, then that, let's say you pick something like, uh, I don't know, admin, and then you decide you're going to change admin, it will do it for you and show you that the admin is going to be about 3,500. So in order to take that 15,000 changing just one thing, you're going to have to change admin to 3,500. And that's really about it. I mean, there's really nothing else you have except for your data table, and that's well, we'll cover that later on in another, in another film. And that pretty much does it for me today uh, using Solver 
in Excel 2016. Thank you so much for, for listening and for tuning in. And just remember that uh, you learn, offer, value, and educate, uh, or love. That's the Grec Tech motto, and we're here to help you learn.